Hello guys, welcome back to Chasing Infinity. This is Adarsh and today I'm going to show you how to build a machine learning model to predict survivors on the Titanic. So at the end of this video, we'll be predicting whether Jack would have survived the Titanic or not. Okay, so we'll be using Keras for this and you can find all the code that we've used in this tutorial in my GitHub repository. I've posted the link in my description. So check it out. So yeah, let's start. So I'll be using this data set from Kaggle, okay, the Titanic data set. So down, download the strain.csv file uh, into a folder, okay. So I've used this folder called Titanic and now I have my Anaconda prompt here. Let me activate the environment that we created in the last video. So activate machine learning. Now let's start spider. So Now let's select the folder where we had save the train.csv file okay so this that folder now let's go to the file explorer and this titanic ann.py in this file we'll be building the model okay let me make it bigger okay okay and now go to this options button here and select con set console to working directory okay select this option so step one is preparing the data set so we'll start by importing pandas and numpy now let's read the contents of train.csv file so i've used the read csv method in pandas to read the contents of the csv file and store it to this variable train data now let's execute these lines and see what happens so to execute select the lines that you want to execute and press Control enter okay so now that's executed let's go to the variable explorer and see so this is how our data set looks like okay now we are going to predict whether a person has survived or not okay so we'll split this data set into two variables x and y x will contain our input data to the model and y will contain whether the person survived or not and as input data we are going to pass in the passenger class uh, their sex that is male or female and then we'll also pass in their age so we'll be using only these three features today you can use more if you want let's do that so now y is an array of survived column let's execute this okay so this is what we have in y okay now next let's choose the features that we'll be using to train this model on so we'll be using these three features as input to our model now let's create a new variable so this new variable df of x df stands for data frame data frame of x contains the value for all these three features okay let's execute this and see so now as you can see df of x contains only these three columns right so we'll be training on these three variables right next what we'll do is we'll encode the feature sex into zeros and ones so that it's easier for the model to learn to do that we need a label encoder so let's get that so from sklearn.preprocessing import label encoder now let's make a new label encoder object okay now let's do the conversion so df of x So what this line basically does is it finds the labels, okay? That's what fit does and it transforms or encodes the entire column, okay? So let's execute this. So now we can see male and female has been changed to zeros and ones, okay? So now let's find out what each label corresponds to. Here the first row is a one. So in our train data, let's see what the first row is. Is it male or female? So it's male. So that means male has been encoded to one and female to zero. So let's just specify that here. Next, what we'll do is we'll encode this P class into dummy variables. So as you can see, there are three classes, one, two, and three. So we'll convert that into dummy variables. So it's easy during training. So we've used the pd.getDummies function to convert the p class column into dummy variables and we have concatenated that to the actual dffx variable okay and access equal to one specifies that the concatenation should happen along the columns right so let's execute this so three more columns have been added to this okay and each column corresponds to one 
passenger class so let's say if a person belongs to passenger class 3 then under column 3 that value will be set to 1 okay else it will be 0 similarly for 1 and 2 right so now uh, that we have encoded the p class variable in, in this form uh, we'll need to get rid of this column right so to do that so to get rid of the p class column we have used the drop function okay let's execute this also so now the p class column is gone right next we need to normalize age so before we normalize age as you can see there are a few missing ages so we'll replace those missing ones with the average of all the ages okay so we have used the fill na function to fill the missing values with the mean of all the available ages right so let's execute this So now uh, the missing values have been replaced with the mean, right? Next, we'll be normalizing the age that is converting it into a value between 0 and 1. So we'll be using the minmax scalar to do that. So I've imported minmax scalar from sklearn.preprocessing and I've initialized the minmax scalar object called MMSE. Okay. So next, we'll transform all the ages. So what we have done here is we've taken all the ages, converted into an array and reshaped it in this form so that we can pass it into this function fit transform. So what this function does is it finds the minimum and maximum of all the ages and basically performs the calculation that is a value minus minimum age divided by the difference between maximum and minimum value. Okay, so that's what this function does. So let's execute this. So as you can see, the ages have been converted into values between 0 and 1, right? So next we'll be building the model. So let's import all the required libraries first. So first of all, I've imported Keras. Then I've imported sequential from Keras.models then dense and dropout from keras.layers okay so now let's start building our model so we've initialized our model variable with the sequential class now we can add the layers one by one so now let's start by adding the input layer so we've added our first layer okay that will be the input layer plus first hidden layer okay so we've used the dense function dense means layers will be fully connected right so each neuron in this layer will be connected to every other neuron in the next layer right and input dimension equal to 5 so why 5 because we have a total of 5 training features right and units equal to 32 these are the number of neurons that we will be having in this layer and I've chosen the activation function to be relu okay so we add this dropout to prevent overfitting and I've chosen the dropout rate to be 0.3 uh, you can uh, reduce this and play around with this value now let's add the second layer so we've added the second layer and just like we did in the first layer we've used dense here and the number of neurons in this layer will be 16 okay that is units equal to 16 and activation equal to relu again so in this layer we do not need to specify any input dimensions since this is not the first layer okay so now let's add the output layer so we've added our output layer the number of neurons would be one here and we've used the activation function sigmoid so using the sigmoid function we get a value between zero and one of the probability of survival right and if you want you can add more layers in between just copy this this line and paste it again so each line corresponds to one layer and you can change the units as well if you want now let's compile our model so we've used the model.compile function to compile our model and, and I'm, I've used Adam function as our optimizer. Okay, then to calculate the loss, I've used binary cross entropy and I've set the metrics to accuracy. Okay, now let's execute this. So now we are ready to train our model. So before we start training our model, let's uh, split our input data into a training and test set. Okay. 
So here I've used the train test split function from sklearn.model selection. Okay. So we've created this, these variables x train, x test, y train, and y test. So we'll pass x train and y train to train the model, and we'll be using x test and y test to evaluate its performance. Okay. And into this train test split function, I've passed all our values of dffx variable and I've passed the y variable and I've set the test size equal to 0.2. This means that 20% of our data will be used to test the model and the other 80% will be used to train the model. Now we are ready to train the model. So to train the model, we have used the model.fit function and into that I've passed x train, y train and I've set the batch size to 10. So each time 10 rows will be fed into our model for training and you can change this value. Okay. So usually lesser values will give you more accuracy and I've set the number of epochs to 500. You can increase this if you want, but make sure to avoid overfitting. Okay. So now let's start training our model by executing these three lines. So a training has started. So we are done training and we are left with an accuracy of around 80%. So now we are ready to make predictions. So let's evaluate our model on the testing data. Okay. Uh, so now this variable predictions will contain all the predictions for X test. Okay. So now let's execute this and see. So as you can see, we have the probability of all the predictions. So to convert that into zeros and ones to know whether a, whether the person survived or not, we are using this. So if the probability is greater than 0.6, then uh, we are assuming the person has survived. And if it's less than 0 0.6, we are assuming the we are assuming the person has not survived, right? So you can change this value. I found that 0 0.6 resulted in better accuracy. Let's execute this. We have our predictions in this form now. So now let's compare these predictions against the y test variable, okay, and see how accurate they are. So to evaluate the actual accuracy, I have created a variable here called correct count and initialized it to zero. So I've written a for loop here for i in range length of x test, okay. And if the prediction that we made is equal to the actual value, then uh, we have a correct prediction, right? So correct count is incremented. So our accuracy will be equal to the predictions that we got correct divided by the total number of cases, right? So now let's execute this and see our accuracy. Okay, so we have 79% accuracy. So now let's answer the question, would Jack have survived the Titanic or not? So that means we need to make a single prediction. So to do that. So what I've done here is I've created a variable called Jack, a numpy array. Okay, that contains these values. So the first column was uh, male or female. So Jack is male. So I've set it to one. Okay, then uh, I found online that Jack was 20 years old. So I have transform this value 20 into a value between 0 and 1 using our uh, min max scalar object. The next three columns specified the passenger class that Jack belonged to. So Jack belonged to class 3. So that means the last column. So I've set the last column to 1 and the other columns to 0, right? And then I've used the model.predict function uh, to predict the survival of Jack. And I've reshaped this variable in the shape. So it's one row with five features right and i've simply printed out the value in this variable jack so i've okay and then let's execute this and find out the answer to our question okay so the probability of jack surviving is 13 percent that's really low so that means jack did not survive right now for fun let's see if rose would have survived or not okay so similar to the code above i've created a numpy array called rose and those was female so this the first value is 0 and I've uh, and I found that Rose was 17 years old I've transformed that value into a value between 0 and 1 and Rose be belong to passenger class 1 so this column is set to 1 and the other columns are set to 0 and I've stored the prediction into this variable Rose survived 
and I'm printing it out. So let's try. Okay, so the probability of rows surviving is 98%. That means rows did survive the Titanic. So now we have answered the question. We are sure that Jack did not survive the Titanic, right? But Rose did survive. So that's the Titanic myth uncovered using machine learning. So if you found this video useful, please like and share this video. And please subscribe to my channel for more machine learning videos. And I'll see you in the next video.